streets, that they may be seen by men. And surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you shut your door, pray to your Father who is in a secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your Father knows the things that you, ha that you need before you ask Him. And this manner say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So when you pray, go into a prayer room or a prayer closet and talk to God in a secret place. Also, have no distractions. Just bring you and your Bible. Because what ends up happening a lot is we end up bringing our phone in there, and then we end up getting Snapchats, Instagrams, all that stuff, and then we ended up getting distracted. So also, when you pray, don't only pray the Lord's Prayer. Pray to God like He's, talk to God like He's right next to you. In Joshua 1, 9, it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So talk to Him. Because he is with you. So what do you pray for? I believe that you can pray to God for anything. Because he says, ask and you shall receive. But what we have to do is just run after it. If we don't run after it, then how are we going to have God answer our prayer? Because a lot of people think that it's just going to show up on our doorstep. That we're just going to wake up tomorrow morning with God knocking on the front door saying, Oh, here's the answer to your prayer. Well, it's not how that works. Like, I hear a lot of people pray, God, I pray that you end this disease. God, I pray that more people get, get to know you. God, I pray that you end racism. Well, what ends up happening is you pray to God to end racism, but is God going to end racism or is he going to give you the opportunity to be nice to a different culture? Is If you pray to God that he ends this disease, is God going to end the disease or is he going to give you the opportunity to go into the medical field maybe one day? If you pray that more people know, get, get to know God, is God going to have more people know him or is he going to give you the opportunity to go out and share his love? See, it's this stuff like this that just isn't making sense because a lot of people are just sitting on their couch waiting for God to come answer their prayer. But we have to start running after it. And what happens is somebody else ends up getting the opportunity. And while we're sitting on the couch scrolling through Instagram and we see somebody else get this opportunity, then we start getting really mad because they, got, they ran after this opportunity while we were just laying down on the couch. So next time you pray for something, don't just sit on the couch and wait for it. Go towards the open door because that's what we need to do. So our prayer life develops us to be good men and women of God and people who hear from God, which makes us, our desires, pure and not selfish. So I encourage you guys today to be in continual prayer and build a healthy relationship with God. Stay prayed up because the enemy is waiting for an opportunity to attack you and he knows your weaknesses. Hey everyone, so Gino talked about prayer, so I'm gonna talk about something a little similar, which is worship. So how many of you love worship? I know for me, I've always loved worship, especially at our church. Like, worship was something I always looked forward to. So go ahead and put in the chat what you think worship is or, like, how would you define worship? So I know for me growing up, I always, like, considered worship as singing. Actually, like, that was the only thing worship was, like, in my mind. But I don't know if some of y'all know my story, but basically, like, a year ago, I had to go a month without singing and talking and so during that month it was very like difficult for me to worship because the what I considered worship was actually like I considered singing worship but that was taken away from me so I had to come like I had to realize that worship isn't just singing it's singing is only one out of like a million different ways of worshiping and so there was two things that like I could do during this month. One, continue to be miserable and feel like a thousand miles away from God. Or two, dive deeper and like truly figure out what is true worship. So I decided to dive deeper. And so during that month, you know, I was on this journey figuring out what is true worship. 
So let me just say first, worship is not only singing. Actually, worship isn't just one thing. Worship is a bunch of different things that like equal into a lot of things. Worship is praying, giving, singing, dancing, and so much more. Worship really is anything that brings glory and honor to God. But most importantly, worship is a lifestyle. And I think Brenton did preach about this a few months or weeks ago. But worship is a lifestyle. It's how you live your life from the moment that you wake up to the moment you go to bed. So the Hebrew meaning of worship is lying at or with the body extended on the ground or another surface. So we can physically, you know, lay ourselves down before the Lord and get on our hands and knees and, you know, bow down and worship Him. But also I see this as we can, like, bow, like, ourselves down and humble ourselves before the Lord. And Pastor Desi says this. He says, die to flesh. Die to our fleshly desires and humble ourselves before the Lord. But this shouldn't be just a once a week thing or whenever we have time or only when we go to church. This needs to be an everyday thing because worship is a lifestyle and we have time for what we make time for. So let's make sure that we're making time for God, but also worship is from your heart. So you need to make sure that your heart is right and that you have a heart for worship and humble yourself, you know, every day, humble yourself, humble your heart, and seek after God. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their, sin, their sins and heal their land. So especially with all of this free time in quarantine, we need to, we should be like worshiping even more and seeking after God even more since we have so much free time. And something my grandpa told me was, the pain of regret is worse than the pain of discipline. So sometimes we may have to discipline ourselves to worship or, you know, get in the secret place with God, but we're not going to, like, the pain of regretting that we didn't is even more pain than just disciplining ourselves and doing it. But like I said earlier, worship is in our heart, so we should, you know, desire to do it. And we should never get tired of worshiping because that's all we're going to be doing in heaven. And so... If we don't have a heart for worship, I encourage you to examine your heart. It says that in the Bible, to examine your heart and make sure that, you know, your heart is right. Your heart is right with God and that you have a heart for worship. And if you don't, all you have to do is ask and seek after God because the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. So ask God to help you and seek after him and humble yourselves. So right now, wherever you are, I encourage you to just close your eyes, maybe. Just look at your heart and look at your life. And if you don't have a heart for worship, that's okay. We're not judging you. But just ask God, you know, to give you a heart of worship, give you His heart. And one last thing is we all are worshiping something. Everybody is worshiping something, either our phones, people, sports. We're worshiping something. So let's make sure that the only thing we're worshiping is God. We need to put God before anything in life. Pastor Desi says God shouldn't be our number one because that means we have a number two and number three. God should be our only one. So we need to make sure that our heart is only for Jesus, only to worship Him, and only to seek and serve Him.